Thank you for tuning in. You're watching Now You Know, a JCC production where we review and discuss all things tech. And today we are talking surround system planning and what you need to know. I'm going to go through some basic important things that you need to consider while planning your surround system and break them down into different categories to help you define each. I will also link all this information down below so that you can reference it as you move through your project. Let's get started. Number one, the very first place to begin is choosing the room that you want to place your surround system in. For most of us, this will be our main family room or living area. Now here are some things to consider when choosing your room. How much ambient light is present in the room? How will you control the light? With TV options available today, there's not much to worry about. However, you do not want light to directly hit your eyes or directly hit the panel and reflect back to you. So throwing in some drapery or, or coverings to help that ambient light um, diminish um, would be a great thing to consider on how you're going to do that. The other thing that you need to consider is the surfaces in the room. Is the room full of hard surfaces such as hardwood floors, coffee tables or glass tables, etc.? Um, if so, try and bring in some material to soften the room. Throw rugs, draperies as I mentioned, uh, will help soften the sound and provide some acoustic treatment to the room without having to install acoustic panels or spend a ton of money um, to correct any echoing or issues that you may have with the room. Where are you going to place your gear or system components? In a cabinet below the TV? In a different room altogether? Oh yeah, you can absolutely achieve that with the right equipment and setup. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later on in a video. So please stay tuned. Um, or are you just going to use some kind of freestanding cabinet or rack to house all your equipment? I don't necessarily recommend that, but you have to figure out what options work best for you. The other thing that you need to consider while planning your surround system is the speakers that you will need to set up in this room and what works best. There are several different options that you need to choose from or that you will have the options to choose from. Um, things such as in wall, in ceiling, surround speaker bars, cube speakers on stands, bookshelves, floor standing, and so on. There are many, many different types of speakers and you will need to carefully choose which one is going to fit your room and what challenges you will have to install each of them. Um, so it also has to do with where you'll be sitting in relation to your display. Where are the speakers going to be? Um, how are you gonna get the speaker wire there to be able to accommodate? that. So there are some certainly some careful planning things that you need to consider um, surrounding the placement and type of speaker that you are going to require for your system. Number two, choosing your video display or TV. Now today we're not going to get into anything um, regarding projectors or dedicated theater rooms. This is just specifically regarding a a living room or a media room is like what I like to call it. Um, very simplistic 5.1 setup. But the very first component that you need to choose for your room is going to be the display or TV. With many choices available today, you will need to consider what works best for you, your family, and the space that you're choosing to place it in. There are a couple of panels available today, and uh, I'm just going to go over a few of them here. You have LED LCD, straight LCD, OLED, and of course within those options you have 3D, um, 1080p, 4K, um, and so on. So there are a plethora of things that you can choose from. You just need to make sure what's right for you in your room. There is one very important aspect that I want to make sure that I, I relay here and, and hopefully um, get you guys to understand. If not, please comment down below. I will try to clarify anything um, that you have a question on to make it very clear. But a lot of manufacturers use different terms um, to rate or to uh, differentiate their options on their panels versus others. But the most important thing you want to learn is the motion rate or motion flow of the panel that you're going to choose. You want to choose the panel with the highest refresh rate or motion rate or motion flow. This is basically how fast the image um, flashes across the screen. The faster it is, the less blur or artifacting you're going to get in your screen. Therefore, you're have, going to have a much more uh, beautiful picture. Um, you're not going to have the breakage when it comes to sports and things like that. Anything with fast motion across the screen could potentially cause blur or motion artifacting. And you're just going to want to choose the panel with the highest motion rate 
or motion flow. If I wasn't very clear on that, please comment down below and I will be happy to clarify that for you. But here's another important thing that you need to consider along with the things that I just mentioned. It's size. The size of the panel is going to depend upon the size of the room and how far you are going to be sitting back away from the screen for optimal viewing. Um, you can calculate this fairly simply. Um, there are two things that you need to consider. How far back you're going to be sitting uh, versus the size of the panel that's in your room. So if you already have a couch in a room and your room is already set up, in order to find out what size TV that you can accommodate for that room, you simply can, can reverse engineer this. But essentially what you do is you take the diagonal size of the television, multiply it by two is what the, is the standard I, that I like to use, but it can be anywhere from one and a half to two and a half. So you take, say it's a 52 inch TV, multiply that by two, divide it by 12. That's how far you should be sitting away from the TV. Um, the distance to your head should be um, that distance to give you optimal viewing into the panel so that you're not having to shift your head or your eyes left to right as you're watching a movie. This way your eyes can com focus completely on the panel and give you a much more uh, immersive uh, picture and viewing experience. Um, so again, diagonal size of the TV, multiply it by 2, divide by 12, that gives you your footage um, that you should be away from the television. Now, um, sitting back too far isn't good and sitting too close isn't good either. So you have to find that happy medium um, and the, the size of the panel that best fits your room. It's a very, very important aspect and it will make uh, a, a huge difference in your viewing experience. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is um, your surround processor or your AV component that is going to be controlling all of your devices. You just want to make sure that you get something that has ample power as well as has all the connectivity things that you need for all of your components, such as making sure you have enough HDMI connections um, and audio connections for all the components that you're going to be putting into your system. Um, so here are some components that, that you may be thinking. Um, if not, hopefully I, I gave you something to, uh, to consider. But of course, everybody's going to have some type of Blu-ray player or HD streaming source such as Netflix or Hulu, um, a 4K player if you are purchasing a 4K TV, a media server um, such as Kodi. Um, you can certainly run that on, on a multiple um, on multiple devices, so you should just uh, find what works best for you. Your cable or satellite box, and of course, if you have kids, any gaming consoles that, um, that you will require. So those are some of the components that will sort of help you dictate what type of surround processor that you will need to power up all of your gear and your speakers. And of course, the final note on the uh, surround processor is get the highest possible wattage that you can doesn't matter how your speakers rate, it becomes more efficient if you have a higher power amplifier within your surround processor. Um, it just it makes it much more simplistic for the speakers to uh, accept that wattage and you don't have to crank it up where you're distorting the sound. So you just want to make sure that you just get a, a the highest rated wattage um, speaker output for your surround processor as you possibly can. Um, I skipped a few numbers here, sorry about that guys, but what I'm looking at is basically number six. And this is the surge protection that you will require for all of your components. You will require a good surge protector to protect your investment. All of these things that we talked about today, your TV, your components, um, all of those things need to be protected. Um, and it also filters out any harmful um, power that's going into your gear and cleans up any noise. But it also protects it from uh, power surges, spikes, um, or lightning or anything like that. Um, and there is a way to also protect your TV. If you do mount it on the wall, they do make um, some special boxes that you can run your wire through, or you can actually just put power to that device, or just get a separate small surge protector that mounts right behind your television um, to your outlet. And I'll try and link that information down below. I'll actually I'll give you guys a product. Um, and number seven, cable options. This is a big deal, folks. You want to make sure that you consider all of the interconnect cable required to connect all of your gears and speaker. A lot of people just um, try and go through their box of old AV equipment um, that's been laying around the house forever and use some of those cords. 
You're going to do yourself a disservice by doing that. Just make sure when you buy your gear, you get the right cables for that piece of equipment. So here, let's go through some examples. Um, I would recommend a high-speed 4K locking HDMI cable with Ethernet. Um, fiber optic toslink cables if you require it um, for audio. Um, now, keep in mind that HDMI passes audio and video, so you typically don't need additional audio cables, but depending on what you're doing and how you're setting up your system, you may. Um, any other analog cables that you may need, if you put any other sources, um, that are analog, you're going to need the cables to be able to support uh, those devices. Um, also purchase the cables in the lengths that you need. Don't buy one size fits all. You'll end up with a cabling mess behind your equipment and troubleshooting and getting everything connected will be a pain in the neck. So if you require a one meter cable, if your component's going to be next to your TV, order a one meter cable for that component. If you need a, a meter and a half, order a meter and a half cable. It'll make it so much easier, folks, and so much cleaner of an install. You'll be happy that you did. And my last note on cable is purchase good quality cable for all your connections, including your speaker cable. Don't buy some cheap cable and expect your picture and audio to sound flawless because it won't. Okay, uh, moving on to number eight. The next thing you need to consider is how are you going to control all of your gear that you just put in? Very important aspect too, because a lot of people put this system in and find it so cumbersome to try and be able to operate the system, right? The wife comes home, she wants to put on um, a program and she can't figure out how to turn on the TV. Get a control option that will make your system seamlessly integrate and operate with all the components that you use. You should purchase something that is that is uh, sh streamlines the operation and makes using your new system easy and intuitive for everybody in the family, not just for you. Um, if you don't choose a good control option, operating your system is obviously gonna be cumbersome and become a task instead of an enjoyment. So spend the extra bucks, you're already making an investment on a good controller or web-based control system for ease of operation so the entire family can use your system with simplicity. That's the key, folks. The components that are out there today, it does make things much easier to operate. There are web apps you can put on your smartphone or your iPad or whatever tablet that you're using to control um, all aspects of the system um, to make it much more easy to use and much more enjoyable. Now, here are some additional things that you need to consider. There is no system that is exactly like another. Each room varies as well as a preference to brand, budget, and aesthetics. Designing and installing your own system um, or media room can be fun and exciting. However, it can come with many challenges. If you find yourself becoming overwhelmed or feel that you're in over your head, you can always call a professional in to help you. But I just say, take a break, do a little bit of research, find out what you're actually trying to accomplish, and then go about it that way. And I hope that if you, if you take some of the advice and input um, that I have given you here today, you will take the correct steps towards building a pretty awesome system. Now, please feel free to comment down below. I will do my best to answer all, all of your questions and concerns. Um, I've been in the business, uh, the AV business, the audio video biz business, excuse me, for uh, well over 15 years. I've installed hundreds of systems. So I will be happy to um, give you some uh, tips and pointers on how to get things done. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a series of videos here. We're gonna go through some of the things that I mentioned today. I'm gonna try and bring some gear in. We're gonna do some hands-on stuff to hopefully get um, everybody pointing in the right directions. So please, again, if you have any questions or tips or pointers or choosing gear, installation, um, or any recommendations, please feel free to comment down below. And uh, you know, don't forget to uh, subscribe, if you will, um, to our channel. And uh, hey, thank you for watching. Now you know.